Hello YouTube, this is God of Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you. Um, now today I'm going to revisit one of the Scottish craft breweries that I did maybe about 50 videos ago or so and I was highly impressed with their other beer that I did there. That one was called the Tornado Citra IPA. But today I have for you the Windswept Brewing Company's Wolf. Now since I did the last video review I was actually really quite keen to get a hold of their other beers but it's taken me a little while to find them and I got all three of the other ones so um, I'm quite... I, I chose this one simply because it's quite... It's a completely different style from the uh, from the, the Tornado Citra IPA whereas the other two are both lighter and fruity ale so I thought this would be a good one to try since it's completely different. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews I'll just take you through a little bit of a history of the brewery and for the benefit of those of you watching outside of Scotland I'll tell you a little bit about the local area of the brewery as well which is always quite interesting but if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free to fast forward towards the last few minutes of the video and you will catch that particular segment. But anyway, this is one of the Scottish craft breweries that is only really popped up in the last few years with the sort of recent boom we've had in Scottish craft brewing and it's from a little village called Lossiemouth just north of the little town of Elgin very famous for its cathedral of course and this is a very very beautiful part of Scotland you've got some really nice golf courses good fishing and a lot of nice beaches up there for those of you watching outside of Scotland just so you're if you're wondering exactly where we're talking about I always describe Scotland as looking like a monster's head so just under the tip of the nose of the monster you have the city of Aberdeen the oil capital of Europe and then over to the western side of the country where the monster gets a bit of a mohawk. You have a little corner in the coastline like this and Inverness is just right there and the town of Elgin is just right bang in the middle of these two cities there. You get a really nice train journey between Aberdeen and Inverness incidentally and then Lossiemouth is just right up, right bang on the coast there. But Lossiemouth is actually the location of the largest RAF base in Scotland and the name Tornado that I mentioned in the Tornado Citra IPA is actually named, it's named that because of the, the aircraft that were based there for a long time. Two of the guys who run this brewery are ex-tornado pilots from the RAF but in the local area there was also RAF can loss for a number of years but this shut in 2012 and was taken over by the army but as I mentioned this is a very very new brew there's not so much history behind it they only started up in 2012 and when they started they were known as the West Beach Brewery but this was only for a very short period of time and the construction of the brewery began in October 2012 and a month later they had received their brewing vessels from Oban Ales in Fort William and by the end of 2012 they brewed their first batch of beer and the brewery capacity is only 3,000 pints per brew now which is quite small but it's quite cool to encounter a brewery that really is in this sort of primary stage of development so we'll hopefully see a lot of good things from them in the next wee while but they're already producing some really good beer in my opinion and they also have a very small pilot brewery which has a capacity of 150 pints per brew that's about four small barrels and this is used to produce their test batches and they experiment with uh, different variations in the yeast fermentation profiles and hop combinations things like that so it's really cool that even at this sort of early stage they are experimenting with their uh, their recipes and stuff like that. You can go and visit the brewery but they ask that they phone in advance and book your visits. I'll put the website uh, link in the description for you and you can have a little look at that if you're interested and they also have a blog on the website there when you can keep up to dates with the events at the brewery and I'll stick that, that as I say that's in the description for you there too. But the brewery apparently only use grain, hops, yeast and water in their beers. It sounds a little bit like the uh, Reinheitsgebot from, uh, from Germany, the Purity Law, but the the water source for this brewery is Speyside Water and this is a region that's very well known for actually having some of the purest water in the world and it produces some very nice whiskies. and as I say this region is uh, in between Aberdeen and Inverness and the train journey between these cities is uh, really really beautiful but the region is very known for its whisky distilleries. The, re uh, the distilleries in the area include Aberlour, Balvenie, Benriach, Benromach, Cardew, Crag and Moore, Dallas Dew, Glen Grant, Glen Moray, Glen Farclas, Glen Fiddich, Glen Livet, Macallan, Speyside Copperidge and Strathyla. So there's a lot of whiskey distilleries for you to go up and visit there. I'd really like to do some whiskey reviews at some point. My friends have got a big uh, stockpile so hopefully they'll let me take just a little bit out of their bottles and things and I'll buy some myself of course as well. Very expensive hobby though I have to say. But anyway the other local craft breweries in Speyside actually, there's a number of them. There's the Speyside Craft Brewery which is uh, just along the road from Elgin and Forest. There's the Cairngorm Brewery down in Aviemore and there's also Brewmeister in Keith who actually hold the uh, the record for the world's strongest beer with their Armageddon beer which I think is 60% so that's the world's strongest beer for you today and obviously there are other craft breweries in the Aberdeen and Inverness areas as well. This is the thing, Scotland's actually getting some really really good craft beers these days. At world beer festivals and things like that the Scottish beers are basically standing up very very well against like the American beers and things like that. They're doing Scotland is doing very very well in the craft beer market I have to say and this brewery is one of the ones who in my opinion are a very very 
good brewery. But their other windswept beers include the Blonde, which is a 4% Pale Ale. They have the APA American Pale Ale, which is a 5% IPA. There's the Tornado, which I've, al I've already reviewed for you. This is a single hop Citra IPA at 6.4%. And they also have a Weizen beer, which is a 5% Weiss beer or wheat beer, however you want to uh, pronounce it. But it's uh, it, this was produced for Oktoberfest, which is basically more uh, celebrating Oktoberfest in October. They celebrated this in Elgin Town Hall every year. But anyway, that's a brief history of the brewery for you today but let's get on to actually tasting this beer itself now this one is a 6% dark strong ale uh, apparently this year it won gold at the Scottish International Brewing Awards SIBA in uh, 2013 so this must be a very very good beer I'm quite looking forward to trying this one as I said but this one is named after the uh, the infamous Wolf of Badenoch also known as Alexander Stewart the Earl of Buchan and he was the Earl of Buchan from 1382 until his death in 1405 and he was actually the first Earl of Buchan since John Common, who was killed by uh, King Robert the Bruce in 1308. sorry, These were the two people who were uh, basically clamouring over the Scottish crown at the time, but the right guy won in the end and did some really, uh, some really good things, I have to say, but he also did some very bad things as well. But he's a really interesting king to read about anyway. But apparently... Um, Badenoch, the, he basically held the Earl of Buchan, Alexander Stewart he held a lot of lands in the north of Scotland but he was very well known for having actually burned down Elgin Cathedral I think it was 1390 it says on the bottle here, he burned down Elgin basically and he was very notorious for being quite a cruel man and uh, raping a lot of people and things like that so uh, they say it's a bit of a local legend but I think he was a bit of a, a local menace by the sounds of it but anyway, still a kind of cool name for the beer but as I say it's a 6% strong uh, dark strong ale that's won a gold medal so this should be quite a good one but let's get it open and get on with the tasting here I see the bottle cap on this one is just a plain black one I'll just let you have a little look at the bottle actually bring that up again it's got quite I think these bottles have got quite a nice modern design on them there as you can see it's a nice sort of thing these are good labels as well actually they don't get destroyed by all the condensation which uh, some uh, brewers just put paper on their labels and it gets destroyed when the beer when the beer sort of heats up a little bit and you get all the condensation but let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting now as you can see it's a very very dark color just get the rest of this guy out swirl up the last little bit it's a good way to get a bit of head on your beer if you're interested in that but there we are okay it's actually a really really nice smelling one but as you can see it's very very dark in colour there's no real light getting through that if I hold it up there not even there's not even a little ready tint to it it's very very dark very not even hazy at all it's completely you can't really see anything through it at all there is just a little bit of carbonation that you can see up the side there but I would describe this as a really dark sort of mahogany chestnut colour of beer in terms of the aroma you're getting a lot of uh, brown sugars in this one you can pick up the caramel and toffee and there's quite a lot of, there's quite a bit of coffee and chocolate in there actually but there's a nice bit of kind of uh, of bready malt as well I sniffed up a little bit of that there but yeah there's a lot of nice uh, bready malts in there a lot of coffee and chocolate aromas there actually but yeah it's a really really nice smelling beer it's actually there's maybe just a little hint of sort of woodiness but it's mainly the brown sugars the caramel and toffee and a nice little bit of bready malt there there's a bit of roasted character to it as well, and I'm still getting a little bit from when I sniffed that up there. But yeah, a really nice smelling beer, but let's give this guy a taste and see what it's like. Mmm, it's actually, it's, it's very, very sweet when you take it in. On the start, you're getting the sort of, the mix between the caramel has a bit of a roasted character to it, and that gives it a bit of sweetness when you take it in. And you're also getting the chocolate and coffee elements there, but roasted brown sugars and uh, and sort of coffee and chocolate elements when you're taking this in. You're getting the sort of dried fruits and berries mixed in there with the chocolate as well. It's really, really nice actually. It's very, it's got a really nice mouthfeel with this one. It actually reminds me quite a bit of a stout this one but they're saying dark strong ale so we'll go with that but this reminds me a little bit of a, a kind of stouty this one or maybe a really dark porter it's, it's a really nice beer this one as well this is another good one but yeah as I say you're opening up with the um, 
with the sort of roasted caramel, nice bit of chocolate and a nice bit of a big roasty character in there as well. It's quite dark on the opening. You've got some of the dark fruits start to come in after that. It's actually kind of quite dried fruits with some berries mixed in with it and the chocolate's still there at that point as well. It's a, it's a really nice mix actually when you take it in and you are getting these elements of sort of a bready and yeasty character to it as well. It's really nice. The finish on this one is just slightly bitter but you have the sort of roasted caramel and chocolate lingering throughout this one. It's actually quite good that it maintains the flavour all the way through the taste. This is, a, this is another really really good beer from this brewery I have to say. But yeah that nice roasted character is just lingering right through the beer. In terms of the mouth of this one I would say it's a, I would call this a mid-bodied beer. The thing that's good about this is it's dark and it still has a lot of this flavour but it's not really you would expect from a heavier beer like this that it is that it would be a little bit more syrupy, but it's not. It's nice and mid-bodied, which makes it really quite drinkable, and it's got a very smooth mouthfeel to it. The carbonation is kind of quite mild on it. It comes in, it comes in a little bit sharp, and then it just sort of smooths out over the taste, and that's what makes it kind of quite a smooth beer. And it's actually got a very sort of slight dry hoppy bitterness on the finish. And you can maybe, maybe just pick up a little hint of the alcohol, but it's only 6%. So you're not, it's not the same kind of idea that you have with the Belgian beers where you have that underlying alcohol all the time. But this is a really, really nice beer. And I mean, for 6%, it has a hell of a lot of flavour in it as well. It's a really, the thing I quite like about this one is the fact that it does have that good strength about the dark beer. It has all the flavour that's in there, but it doesn't have, it's not overly heavy, which is quite good. It's quite good to find a fairly sessionable dark beer. I always like it when you find that. But yeah, this is another really good effort from the Windswept Brewing Company. Really, really impressed with these guys so far. But anyway, I hope you found this beer review uh, informative. As I say, this is a brewery that I think are very sort of up and coming and I've really enjoyed um, doing this one for you. And as I say, I really enjoyed the Tornado beer for you that I reviewed the last time. Have a look at the video description for that one as well. But I highly recommend that if you see these beers, give them a try. I'm not sure how widely available they are just now. There was only one shop in Aberdeen that stocked these, so I had to go all the way over there to pick these up. But it's definitely worth it. This is a really, really good craft brewery. As I say, they're only actually about a year old just now, so give them some support. Go and buy their beers and give them a try. I think there's a lot of good things to come from this craft brewery. Hopefully they bottle up their Weizen at some point. I'd be really interested to try that, going by the quality of the last two beers that I've had from them. But anyway, thanks again for watching my beer reviews. As I say, I hope it's been informative, and thank you for your support for watching my reviews so far. Please let me know in the comments uh, section if you've had this beer before already. As I say, really, really, really nice dark beer with a nice sort of lighter uh, feel to it. So it's a really sessionable dark beer which is always interesting but thanks again for watching my beer reviews please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff thanks again for watching this is goddard radio moscow cheers